Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. This video, we're going to cover a topic that I actually haven't seen a whole lot. So either you're going to learn something that's like this secret magical knowledge that not a lot of people use, <laughs> or you're gonna learn something that's really not a whole lot practical. Well, I guess that's up for you guys to decide. So hopefully this video is not a waste of your time. <laughs> but you know what is never a waste of your time? Yeah. You guessed it, going to a coding boot camp. Specifically, you want to go to Dev Mountain because Dev Mountain is my sponsor and they are awesome. What do they do? Well, they help you get up to speed with JavaScript based web development. So you're going to be going in there, studying JavaScript, React, Node.js, and take all these pieces of application development, put them all together, and build real world applications. So if you want to fill out your portfolio and get some experience and go to a, co a career centric boot camp, I'd recommend Dev Mountain, and you know what? They're giving $250 off if you let them know I sent you their way. So check out the link in the description, and now let's get back to labels for break and continue. So what exactly are labels? Well, it basically allows you to label an outer for loop and use a break or continue to go to the outer for loop instead of the one you're currently in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this stuff down here and we're going to focus on this for loop we already have. So let's get rid of this comment. And what is this for loop currently doing? Well, let's just save and do a refresh. You can see it's actually just printing each one of these elements in the array. And then after each of the elements, it puts a little squiggly to separate the different um, subarrays. So what we can do, let's say we're looking for a particular value. Let's go with 54. Why did I choose 54? Well, I just wanted to show an example where it's not existent in the first array, but it is in the second array. So what we might do is we might console log those values, but then we might do a case where if grades of i and k is equal to the value value 54, I'm gonna use a triple equals there, then we might do another console log and say like, you found the value. So you might get that value, you might search for a value from input or whatever, totally up to you, I'm just hard coding that value there. And do a refresh and it says you found the value. So it seems to be working and what you can do is you can use the keywords break and continue inside of loops. And as a refresher, what exactly do these do? Well, the break is going to break out of a loop altogether. So if we're inside of this if condition and we say break, it's just going to break out of this for loop and go to the next iteration of this for loop. So that means it's going to skip the rest of this array. So we, we, it's, it's gonna skip these ones right here. So when we do a refresh, you can see you found the value is the last thing it says here. And then it just jumps to this next iteration of the outer for loop right here. Now, if this stuff is a little bit much with all the for loops and stuff, I've released a bunch of videos over for loops and JavaScript and working with arrays. So make sure you check out those videos because that's gonna help you get the, the JavaScript syntax down to work with arrays with these for loops. So hopefully I'm not just skimming over this too quickly for you guys, but I don't wanna linger too long on this syntax here. But basically the break keyword is going to, to skip out of this, this for loop here and go to the next iteration of this for loop here. Uh, sorry, actually, all the way down here. <laughs> so it'll just increase I and start again from line nine. Now the other keyword you should know is continue. And we've, we've talked about this one too, if I can spell it out. <laughs> this will actually go to the next iteration of the inner for loop. And currently it's the absolute last thing inside of this for loop, so it's not actually going to make a difference. But if we had another console log in here, I don't know, just doing stuff. Well, what's gonna happen is it's going to skip this console log here in the case that this is 50, 54 because it's going to hit that continue. It's not going to do the console log because it's gonna go to the next iteration of this for loop. So when we do a refresh, we see this doing stuff for every single element except the one with 54. It says you found the value. A similar thing could be set up with an if else because you can basically see it as, hey, if it's 54, print this, else print doing stuff. <laughs> but that's just another way to get the task done. Now to step up our game to labels. So what is a label? Well, basically we could take a look at our outer for loop and give it a name. So what if we called it outer loop, like so. 
and I'm actually going to use a, a capital L there. So we just gave a, for, a label to this for loop, and we can reference this label inside of our, our continues and our breaks to jump to that outer loop rather than the inner loop. So now, now if we say continue outer loop, well, this is actually going to reference the outer loop. So it's going to continue with the next iteration of the outer loop rather than the next iteration of the inner loop. So what is that going to do? Well, actually using the continue with the outer loop as a, a label is going to be very similar to using a break because it's going to stop doing this for loop. So once again, continue outer loop is very similar to just using break inside of the inner for loop. So what is the difference then? Well, continue outer loop is going to jump to the next iteration of this outer loop, but anything that's outside of this for loop is not going to get executed. So this line down here is going to be the deciding factor on whether we want to use continue outer loop or if we want to use a break. So this code is ignored with continue outer loop. This code is not ignored with a, a break. Um, so let's just go through an example of this. Let's do a refresh. So what happens is it finds that value 54, it prints you found the value, and then it jumps to the next array, 43. If instead we used a break, first paying attention to what, what goes on here, it does not print that squiggly line. <laughs> now if we save and do a refresh here, it says you found the value, and then it does print that squiggly line. So that's a primary difference. When you use break, it breaks out of this outer for loop and continues execution at line 17. When we use continue with the uh, outer loop, it just goes to the next iteration of the outer loop immediately, skipping anything that comes after this. Now the other option is to use a label, but instead of using continue, it's to use break. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to break out of the outer loop and just jump down here to line 20. So this is this is where it will break. I was going to spell that out, but I can't I can't write and talk at the same time, so <laughs> I'm not going to worry about it. So if we do break outer loop, it's going to finish this outer loop and continue down from 20. So when we do a refresh, what's going to happen is it's going to find that value 54 and then end the search altogether. So overall, this stuff can be a little bit confusing because there's so many different options. There is break and continue, and you can put that inside of the inner for loop, or you can put it inside of the outer for loop, and then you can use labels to reference a loop farther up the nest. So you gotta do a lot of practice with this if you really wanna get it down. Honestly, even going through this video, I had, I had to think about it just to make sure I was saying the right thing and that it was going to jump the correct way. So using these things can be a uh, little bit confusing sometimes, but just make sure you understand them. And what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be moving on to a new topic. So I would encourage you guys to make sure you have all of this information down before you move on to the next topic. So that way it doesn't come back and bite you. So thank you guys for watching. In the next video, we're going to be talking about something new. I'm looking forward to it. So please be sure to subscribe as that really helps out the channel. Thanks guys. And um, yeah. <laughs>